and as you can probably guess, I'm going to be talking about the Distress Oxide inks by Tim Holtz for Ranger. I'm really excited about them because I've been playing and I absolutely love them. They're so much fun and I think they they might be my favorite Distress tool even more than Distress Ink and they might even be my favorite mixed media um, tool so or ink and I'm really excited to share it with you. In today's video I'm going to talk a little bit about the Distress Oxide inks and their properties and I'm also going to be showing you a ton of different techniques. So I actually have about 30 different techniques you can do with the Distress Oxide inks that I'm going to show you today and I'm really excited. I'm going to be showing them to you pretty quickly because I want to get through all 30 of them in one video which is kind of like a superwoman kind of uh, mission for me today. But I'm looking forward to it and I'm going to be demonstrating all these techniques on the shipping labels which I got from Staples or a business supply shop. Um, I do have some black shipping labels that I just created out of black cardstock that I'm going to show you a couple things on too. So I'm really, really looking forward to it and I hope that you guys will join me and stick with it to kind of see all of the different techniques that you can use the Distress Oxide inks for and what great capabilities they are. And the techniques range from super easy for pe beginners to all the way to advanced for people who are a little more comfortable with Distress tools and inks and a little more comfortable with stamping and mixed media and stuff. So I have it all jam-packed into this video and I hope that you guys will really enjoy it. Just as a couple of notes from the beginning, I have the first 12 colors of the Distress Oxide inks. Um, Ranger has released an additional 12. I haven't got those yet, although I did pre-order them. As soon as I started playing with these ones, I was like, I'm in love, I need all of the colors. <laughs> I also wanted to mention that I did pay for all of these. I'm not being um, asked to promote these. I just love them so much that I wanted to share them with you today. Just thought it would be a good idea to start and let you know the different colors that I'm using. So I have Vintage Photo, Fossilized Amber, Spice Marmalade, Peeled Paint, Walnut Stain, Cracked Pistachio, Wilted Violet, Broken China, Worn Lipstick, Faded Jeans, Ice Spruce, and Fired Brick. Um, just in case you've never heard of the Distress Oxide inks before or you haven't ever watched a video about them, um, I just wanted to tell you a couple just random details about them just so that you kind of understand what I'm talking about. Distress Oxide inks are a dye and pigment fusion. So in the crafting industry, there's kind of four main different types of ink. You have dye inks, you have pigment inks, you have hybrid inks, and you have chalk inks. And these ones are kind of this really great fusion between a dye and pigment. Now, a lot of people have been asking, are the Distress Oxide inks um, a hybrid ink? And they're not. I actually think they're way cooler than a hybrid ink. So a hybrid ink is a fast drying permanent ink that contains dye and dries like a pigment. So it's a dye that dries like a pigment. These are a pigment and a dye mashed together. So if a pigment ink and a dye ink had a baby, you would get Distress Oxide, which is what makes it a fusion. And they're really, really cool. And because of the fusion, they have the properties of the dye ink, they have the properties of a pigment ink, and they create these really cool effects that I'm kind of excited to share with you guys today. They are different from the Distress inks, the regular inks. So I only have the cube inks for Distress ink. So I want to just kind of quickly show you um, a couple main differences between the two. Um, obviously one of the main differences is the size. So the Distress inks, the regular ones that come from Ranger and Tim Holtz, you can get in the large size or the small cube size. The Distress Oxides are currently only released in the large size and Tim Holtz and Ranger have said that they're not going to be releasing it in the small size just because of the properties of the dye and pigment fusion don't work in the cube. 
So just in case you were wondering, they're probably not gonna come in this smaller shape unless they can find a different way to suspend the ink in there, but at currently they don't have plans for it. Another thing that you'll obviously notice pretty quickly is the color of the container. The regular Distress inks have a black container while the Oxide inks have a gray container. And the nice thing about that is if you have all of your Distress inks and Distress Oxides mixed together in your um, stash or in your area, you'll be able to quickly tell them apart based on the color. Another thing I just wanted to quickly show you is the way that the ink pads work. So they're both pretty similar in terms of they're both that firm felt pad where the ink is suspended. It's not squishy um, like a dye or pigment ink. They are a firm felt pad, so you do have to press down. One of the other differences you'll notice between Distress inks and Distress Oxide inks is Distress inks are translucent. So if I push my finger on this ink pad and show it to you, you can kind of see the color of my skin underneath. It is translucent. If I do the same thing on the Distress Oxide ink pad and show it to you, it's opaque. So they definitely have different properties in terms of that because the Distress inks are a dye ink that creates a really cool Distress look and the Distress Oxide inks are a fusion between the dye and the pigment and they also create a really cool effect. They just have different properties and can do different things. And as I go through the different techniques today, you'll definitely notice the differences between the two inks and um, what you can do with them. When you add water to Distress Oxide inks, they do react and create this really cool oxidi oxidized effect, which I'm definitely going to be showing you in the techniques. And it creates a really soft, pastel-y, chalky finish. But one important thing is it's chalk-like, not chalk. So when you rub a tag or rub something that you've used the Distress Oxide inks on, even though it looks like chalky, it's not. It doesn't rub off on your fingers. Okay, for the rest of the properties of the Distress Oxide inks, I think I'll show you in the technique. So let's head right into the technique so that I can show you all of the great, cool things the Distress Oxide inks have done. And if you're following along with me, I'd love to hear in the comments which one of these techniques you've tried, which one you're excited to try, and which one you think might be the hardest for you. So for technique number one, I'm actually going to use a black or dark cardstock tag to show you one of the really cool properties of the Distress Oxide inks. Now if you were to use one of the regular Distress inks on a dark colored cardstock, like craft, black, pattern paper, I want to show you what happens. I'm just going to rub that right on to the card. You can see because it's translucent, it doesn't really show up. You have no way of telling what the color is, it just looks wet. But what if I do the same thing with Distress Oxide inks? So let me grab the Cracked Pistachio and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to rub the ink pad directly onto the tag. And look at that. So technique number one is the fact that you can use the Distress Oxide inks on dark cardstock, including black, craft, and it'll definitely show up and create this really pretty, vibrant, chalky finish. You can wet it, you can, you can do all of the other techniques that I'm gonna show you today on dark cardstock, as well as you could just let it dry just like this. For the second technique, what you're gonna need is a mini Distress blending tool. And you can use these awesome ones which come from Ranger that I really love, or you could use a makeup sponge or some other type of blending tool. And one of the things I really wanna show you that I love about the Distress Oxide inks is how they blend. Because of the fact that they stay wet longer on the paper, they actually blend so smoothly and so nicely. They blend perfectly on the water with one color, multiple colors, there's no harsh lines, and it's also faster to blend because it stays wet longer. So when I use this cracked pistachio, it goes on so smoothly without any harsh lines, and it creates this really gorgeous blended effect. And I can actually mix in some broken china 
or some faded jeans into this and it'll look really cute. So let's start with the faded jeans. I'm going to blend it on the tag in a circular motion. If you notice anywhere where you've gotten a little more ink than you meant to, just keep blending and because it's wet, it'll blend right out. And you can go back and forth in between the inks to create that really beautiful blended look between the colors. What I wanna do is also try to use some of the Broken China because that's probably my favorite color right now. It's just such a beautiful color. And I'm going to blend the faded jeans in and the Broken China and the Cracked Pistachio all together. It's such a smooth, soft, almost suede looking blend. So there's your second technique. Because of their properties, you're gonna get a really smooth, awesome blend between colors. For the third technique, we're gonna need a tag, some water, a heat gun, and a craft mat or craft sheet. So what I'm gonna do for this one is I'm actually gonna take some of the color that I wanna use and I'm going to smush it down on my craft sheet. Now just one thing I did wanna say, because the ink is suspended in here, you do need to push down to get the ink to come out of um, the pad. So I'm gonna smush down a few colors. So I started with Broken China. Maybe I'll add some fossilized ember and maybe a little bit of cracked pistachio. I'm just randomly picking colors, by the way. You could definitely do any color combination that you'd like. Once you smush the colors down on your mat, spritz it with water a couple times so that you see the color starting to bead up. And then you're going to take your tag and you're going to run it through the ink. Once you do that, heat set it. Partway through heat setting it, spritz it with water again and you'll get to see that great oxidization. And check that out. When I went back and spritzed it, the areas that I spritzed started to oxidize and created this really cool effect. I still have all this ink on my craft sheet and I'm a big believer of not wasting anything. So what you can do is you can add a little more water if you need it and you can actually go back in with the tag. And one thing that I'm going to repeat often throughout this video is wet on wet blends. So you'll notice that when the cracked pistachio and the broken china blended together, it created this really gorgeous color that you see there. But when you do dry and you do wet on dry, it actually layers on top. So I'm going to go through and show you how it will layer on top. that the color that I added the second time and you can see the color that I added the second time layered on top of that and I can actually go back in with a little bit of this yellow and that will layer on top too. Oh, oh, oh. grabbed another tag and stuck that in there so you can get so much just from a little bit of color 
For technique number four, you're going to need an acrylic block. Um, I just have this one size, but you could use any size that you like. This is similar to the last technique, but it gives you a little bit more control. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your acrylic block and you're actually going to smush your um, Distress Oxide ink onto the acrylic block instead of your craft sheet. So I'm using Wilted Violet. I smushed some of that onto the acrylic block. I'm gonna spritz with water just to get it moving. And I'm actually gonna take my tag and place it right down on top of the acrylic block and then flip it over. Lift it up. And I like to do multiple tags at the same time just because I feel like I get more bang for my buck. So you can actually use the acrylic block to move the ink around on your tag or on your surface. And I did want to mention you can definitely do these same techniques even if you're not on a tag. So we're going to do that same thing where we heat set it but part way through heat setting we spritz with water again to create it to do that really awesome oxidization look. <laughs> So check that out. That's just one color and the oxidization that I added when I spritzed it with water is so cool. So I actually think you could leave those just as they are and they look really great, but I like to layer colors on top. So remember, wet on dry layers. So this is dry. It's not crispy dry, but it's dry enough. Um, so I'm going to actually go in with another color and I think it might be fun to go in with a little worn lipstick just because I love worn lipstick. So I'm going to smush it on my acrylic block again, spritz with water and lay the tag on top. This time I'm going to start with this one, lay it on top, flip it over, lift up and then go to the other tag and kind of use the acrylic block to smush the ink around. And now I'm gonna heat set it, spritz with water part way, and continue to heat set. Check that out. One of the things I just love about the Distress Oxide inks is how they layer on top. So by that I mean you can still clearly see the purple color and you get to see that really beautiful pink on top which is just so fun. If I did the same technique with regular Distress inks, each time you added water or added another color on top it would reactivate and it would all blend together. And you could only do that with two or three colors but with these you can just keep on going and because it's dry it'll just layer right on top. So let's add some broken china and then we'll go back and add some fossilized amber. Just because I love this color combination and I think it's going to look really cute. So there is technique number four, 
where you use the acrylic block and I think this is one of the, my favorite techniques in terms of getting really gorgeous layering on your tags. For technique number five, this is another really easy one that I think anybody could handle this. What you're going to do is you're actually going to take your Distress Oxide ink pad and go direct to paper. So let's start with Spice Marmalade. I'm just going to push down on the ink pad and swipe it across um, the tag going direct to paper. And you can go across the whole tag or just part of it. It's really up to you. You can use one color or you can use multiple colors. So on this tag, I'll just leave the Spice Marmalade. On this one, I'll also add um, Fossilized Ember. So I am being careful not to um, let the ink from the one touch the other ink pad, but if it does, you can just rub it off with a damp cloth or your finger and it'll be good. It doesn't actually stain the ink pad, so you don't need to worry that much, just rub it off. So I've gone direct to paper. This ink is still wet. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to spritz it with some water. Then I'm going to heat set it and while I'm heat setting it, I'm going to spritz it again. And check that out. Because I added water while I was drying it, it created that oxidized effect right on the tag, which is just super fun. So you can actually leave it just like that, but you can actually go in with another color too. So I might decide, well, I love worn lipstick with um, fossilized ember and spice marmalade. I'm going to go direct to paper again. And again, if you get any on there, just rub it off with your finger and it should be just fine. And I'll do some on this tag too, just because I love the colors um, pink, orange, and yellow together. I'm going to spritz it with some water just to get it going and heat set it again. And check that out. I get a really pretty, gorgeous design on there and it was super easy. For technique number six, you're going to need some paintbrush and some water. So I'm going to take one of my colors, actually peel paint, smush it on my craft sheet. I'm going to load my paintbrush with some water and mix that with the color that I have on the sheet. I can also just spritz water to get it going. And I'm going to create this like watercolor effect um, right on my tag using my paintbrush. So just with a light wash, I'm actually going to cover the whole entire tag with that really beautiful peeled paint color, creating a light wash from top to bottom, bottom to top, really whatever you want is fine. And it just creates really beautiful color. Now obviously depending on how much water you add to your ink will create um, either a lighter color or a darker color. I'm going to either let that air dry or heat set it and part way through um, drying I'm actually going to um, spritz it with some water. That created such a beautiful oxidized look. You can leave it just like that or you can go back in with your paintbrush and do that watercolory effect on a few more spots on the tag or just kind of layering on top of what you've already done. Heat set it and spritz it with water again. And check that out. I've only used one color but because of the incredible properties of the Distress Oxide inks, which include dye and pigment, I actually get a variation of different colors because of when it oxidizes. It's almost as if the dye seeps out and separates a little bit from the pigment, creating a variation in tones and colors, which is just so beautiful and creates such a dynamic effect on your tag and all you've used is one color some water, and a paintbrush. For technique seven and eight, you're gonna need a paintbrush and a baby wipe. Now I'm doing technique seven and eight together because they're really similar and they create similar looks, but you're just using a different tool, whether it's a baby wipe or a paintbrush. So for this technique, you're gonna go direct to paper again. So you're gonna take your um, color, let's use faded jeans and go direct to paper, again pushing down to get that beautiful color on your tag. And you can add as much or as little as you'd like, obviously. And I'll leave that one there. 
Now, if you're using a paintbrush for technique number seven, what you're gonna do is you're gonna dip your paintbrush in some water and you're going to paint across the cover of your tag and it's going to activate the ink, creating this really pretty wash. It's a little more intense than the other wash that we did, but it creates this really gorgeous oxidized effect on your tag with little to no effort. So that's with a paintbrush. One of the things I discovered while I was just playing around is you can actually do the same technique with a baby wipe. So that's technique number eight. You wanna have a damp baby wipe, you put your ink direct to paper and then you rub the baby wipe along the tag and the color will start to activate and spread across the page, creating this really cool effect um, where it slightly oxidizes but also slightly just um, spreads the ink across. Now obviously you're getting a very different effect if you use a paintbrush and you're keeping most of the color on there versus if you use a baby wipe and you're removing some of the color. But either way it creates a really cool effect. And one of the things you can do is heat set it and spray it with water and you'll see it oxidize again. So see this tag's fairly dry because I used a baby wipe and it didn't add a lot of water to it so I'm going to spritz it. This one still has a lot of ink on there, but I'm just gonna lightly spritz it, and you're gonna see that incredible oxidization effect start to happen on the tag. So let's let those dry, and I'll be right back to show you what they look like. And check it out. Isn't it stunning? It just looks so pretty. Now, I've done this with one color, and I think you could leave it like that. It looks super pretty but I kinda wanna show you what it looks like when you do the same technique with multiple colors on your um, tag. So let's use some faded jeans, and I'll just go direct to paper at the bottom of my tag here with some faded jeans. And on the top of my tag, I'm gonna go in with some broken china. Again, direct to paper. I'm going to grab my wet baby wipe and run it through the two inks and you can see that I can create this really gorgeous blend between the two just by using a baby wipe. You don't want to press down too much or you'll lose a lot of your ink but if you lightly run the wet baby wipe across the tag it'll blend the two colors together. The more you rub, the more ink that you'll remove, so just be aware of that. And that could be part of your technique, so it's okay if you do that too. So I'm going to spritz this with water to see what happens to create that oxidized look. And I'll let that dry, and I'll show you all three tags in just a minute. And there you have it. Technique number seven, technique number eight, water brush or baby wipe. Either way, you get a really cool effect when you go direct to paper and then add the water afterwards. I actually kind of prefer technique number seven when you go direct to paper and add the water brush, but I feel like you can get some really cool effects with just the baby wipe too. So maybe play around and see what you enjoy. For technique number nine, we're gonna go back to our craft mat and do some smushing. And this time we're gonna create a really cool rainbow effect on our take. So I'm gonna do a number of colors in a rainbow order. Instead of smushing the entire pad down on my mat, I'm just smushing the edge. Just because I'm using tags, it doesn't end up taking that much space up on the tag. So I wanna kind of keep the colors fairly close and just use the edge of the felt pad so that the colors can all show up on the tag. So I did some warm lipstick, some spice marmalade, some fossilized amber. Let's do some cracked pistachio and some broken china. And I feel like every rainbow has to have some purple in it, so we'll go back in and do some wilted violet as well. And again, I'm just using the edge of my um, pad there. I'm keeping the colors slightly separate just because I didn't want to um, dirty up any of the ink pads. But again, if you do, just wipe it off. So now that I've smushed my rainbow of colors onto my craft sheet, I'm gonna spritz it with water pretty generously because I want it to blend really well. Then I'm gonna take my tag and starting from one end to the other, I'm actually gonna just run the tag through to pick up that color and create that really beautiful rainbow. Check it out. It kind of reminds me of 
a unicorn. <laughs> I have lots of ink on my craft sheet, so I'm gonna go in with another tag, and I'm gonna do it three times. Just so you know though, the more you do it, the more the colors start to blend together. But I still think you can get really cool effects whether you've done it the first time, the second, or the third. So let's heat set these. While I heat set them, I'll spritz them with water. So I love the way that that first rainbow tag worked out. I've got all of the colors blending together. So I'm gonna leave that one as is. The other ones don't feel complete to me. And one of the techniques and uh, things I just wanna say, and I've heard Tim say this before too, if you're not happy with the effect on your tag, it probably means you're not done, especially with the Distress Oxide inks. So what you can do is, because it's dry, you can layer on top of it and continue to create that really gorgeous effect. And there you have it, a really soft rainbowy effect with multiple colors swirling together on your page. For technique number 10, you're gonna need a paintbrush again and your craft mat. I'm gonna add some of a few colors onto the sheet and you can use as many different colors as you like for this technique. Um, let's use some ice spruce. I haven't used that yet. So I've got fossilized ember, peel paint, ice spruce, and walnut stain. Just for fun. I'm not really a brown fan, but I know some other people are, so I'll just add some brown. For this one, you're going to spritz with water pretty generously and you're going to load your paintbrush with color just one color at a time. And you're gonna actually flick the color onto your tag, creating a really gorgeous um, splatter effect on your tags. And just as a reminder, if you're doing splatters, the further away you are, the smaller your splatters, and the closer you are, the bigger they are. So do as much splatter as you like, then heat set it, do it for each color, and I'll show you what it looks like. Um, just a reminder though, you want to heat set in between layers, otherwise they're going to blend together. technique number 10 where you've added layers and layers of splatters on top of your tag. It looks super cute and I think it would be fun to try it with all different types of color combinations and maybe even do one where I used like every color and created almost like a confetti effect. For technique number 11 you're going to create a splatter background like you did in number 10 but you're going to continue and keep adding. So what you can do is after you've created that splatter background you can actually use a mini distress blending tool and blend on top of it. Or you could do the opposite blend underneath and then splatter on top. So let me use some fossilized ember and my mini blending tool and I'm going to blend right on the tag over top of that really gorgeous splatter, creating a really soft yellow, golden yellow color tone to it. Look how beautiful that is. And you could actually leave it and just let it dry just like that and I think it would look really gorgeous. Or you can spritz it with water, heat set it, spritz it, dry it, you know the usual. So I'm going to try spritzing it and see what happens. And check that out. It created a really cool soft yellowy tone and I did use a paper towel to remove some of the pockets of water and so it created this like lighter toned area as well. And some of the droplets which weren't completely dry did um, seep out and blend a little bit but I think it actually created a really cool background. So for technique number 12 and 13 we're going to use a mini blending tool and a stencil to create two different really cool effects. Um, and I'm really excited about this one because I love the way that it looks. So I'm going to use this Tim Holtz stencil. Let's find one that we really like here. Let's use this really gorgeous one. I'm going to lay it on top of my tag and you can actually use a blending tool on top of this through the stencil to create a really cool pattern on the background. 
you're going to want to hold your stencil pretty firmly while you add your color through or else um, it'll move and you won't get a, a really great impression. But even if you don't get a great impression, that's okay. My thought is then it was meant to be. And the fun thing about mixed media is it purposely looks not perfect. You can either go in a circle like I am, or you can kind of dab your ink blending tool on your sheet through the stencil like this too. And either way, you'll get a really great impression and it'll look really cool. So I've used Broken China for that. I've blended through the stencil to create that really pretty like lace almost effect. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna gently mist that with some water just to kind of let it run and blend and do its thing. And that's technique number 12. For technique number 13, I'm gonna use the stencil that I already have all this ink on. Um, I don't like to waste anything, so let's not waste all of this really awesome ink that's on this stencil. So I have the ink on there. I'm gonna just lightly mist the stencil. I'm going to place my tag right on top of the stencil, pressing down lightly so that it'll pick up the impression, and then lift the tag quickly and fluidly off the stencil. And in some places it'll go on really well, in other places it won't, but it creates kind of like a negative impression, which is just so fun. So when, you, when it dries is when you're gonna really see the magic. So check that out, you've got um, technique number 12 where you go through the stencil and it creates a really pretty effect. It almost glows and it does seep out and the ink does run a little bit but I actually think you still get the stencil image and it creates that really soft um, look that I was kind of going for. And then with technique number 13, you're getting the negative imprint of the stencil in a few places. Now just a couple notes about that. I found that it works best when you use a stencil that has some thick areas like this um, and you'll get the best bang for your buck basically. Here you go, I did the same technique with a different stencil and that time I misted it with more water creating more of the separation of the ink and pigment and then check out the really cool negative. Um, image that it created. You can definitely see the floral pattern, but it's really soft and watercolory. It's really, really fun technique. For technique number 14, we're gonna use our stencils again. And this time, instead of using ink through the stencil, we're gonna actually take the ink pad direct to the stencil, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna lay the tag down I'm gonna grab my color, let's say fired brick. I'm gonna hold my stencil and actually use the um, ink pad direct to stencil. You wanna hold the stencil pretty um, straight so that it doesn't go anywhere. And you might need to push down a couple of times to do this. And when you lift up your stencil, it's gonna create like a light um, impression. Now obviously because the mat is not squishy, it's not perfect, but I actually think that that kind of creates a really cool effect. So I've done that, I'm gonna spritz it with water and let the ink kind of run and seep and spread out, which is like part of the fun of it. So that's technique number 14 for tech number technique number 15. I'm gonna use the stencil that has ink on it and do the same thing I did for 13, um, but this time there's going to be more ink on here so I can probably do more impressions and get a crisper impression. So again, you want to spritz with some water so that it'll get going. Not too much, but enough to be able to get an impression. You're going to take your tang, you're going to lay it on top, gently spread it, then lift from the top to the bottom quickly off and check out that incredible impression I got. Because there's so much ink on there, you're gonna get a really great impression. So I can actually do it a couple times. So yeah, technique number 15 is similar to technique number 13, but it's different because you're actually getting a better impression because there's more ink on the stencil. You might even be able to get a few impressions. If you need to, you might need to mist it again um, and then lay your tag on. I just kind of play to see how many impressions I can get. Sometimes you'll be able to get more than others. 
and check out that. Even my third impression is still really gorgeous. And I think I could go back and do another one. And this time I'm going to use a tag that already has ink on it, like this one, and lay that on top, creating really gorgeous layers. Now let's lift that up and check that out. How fun is that? So I'm going to let these dry. One of the things you can do, I'm going to just move this to the side for a second. You can take your impression and spritz it with water and let it oxidize and run and, and create that like water glowy effect too. Or you can leave it just as it is like I'm doing with these two. So I'm going to heat set these and show you all five of them in just a sec. So check these out. So here's technique number 14 where I lay the stencil on top and go direct ink pad to the stencil. And while you can't necessarily see the pattern really well, it does create a really fun effect in the areas where the ink went through the pad and then where the water oxidized. So I would just keep in mind that you're not necessarily going to see the pattern of your, your stencil. You're more creating an effect with it. But number 15 is where the magic happens. So that's when I had all that ink on my stencil. I spritzed it with water and then I created these impressions and I ended up getting about 14, four tags um, from number 14. So here's the first one where you get that really gorgeous crisp um, impression from the stencil which is just so beautiful and it actually has a watercolor -y effect because of the way that you did it. If you used an ink blending tool you wouldn't get that watercolor -y effect in the same way. Um, here's when I did it on a background that was already done. And then here are the two backgrounds from the different ones. Here's the one that I spritz with water a lot. And here's the one that I didn't spritz a lot. And you can see on this one, you still have some of the pattern, but you get that great oxidization where the ink and the dye has separated and created this really cool effect. And on this one, you get almost like a glow around the areas where you have the stencil, um, which is just really fun. So you get all those different designs just by going to one stencil one time with the ink pad. So for technique number 16, we're gonna use our stencils again. So I'm gonna use, um, maybe not that one. I'm gonna use, I'll use one of these. I'm gonna use one of these Tim Holtz um, Stamp Stations stencils. How about we use like this lattice one? And what you're going to do is you're going to take a tag that you already have a background on and you're going to stencil onto the background. And you can use any color you like um, to create your effect. For this one, I thought it would be kind of fun to use fossilized amber. And you can stencil the whole thing or just part of it. And you're going to go right through the stencil onto your background. And check out how beautiful that looks on your tag. And let's do the same thing on here. So this is fossilized umber on the background, so it's not gonna show up super dark like the other one, but you're still gonna be able to see it. So I wanted to show you what it looked like when you use the same color on top of it. So it's really subtle. Not sure if the camera even picks that up, but you can definitely see it, and it creates that really cool effect. So you can either let it air dry just like that, or you can spritz it with water. So this one I'm gonna let air dry, and this one I'm gonna spritz with water to kind of show you how it like turns on and illuminates. You wanna do a light misting and then heat set. And there you have it. You can see the oxidization that occurred and you can still see the pattern from the stencil. For technique number um, 17, we're gonna use a stencil and a mini distress tool again. And this time we're gonna ink up the background before we even use the stencil. So let's blend some colors on the background. So maybe I'll start with some fired brick and just blend it on there. So I've got some fired brick on there. And maybe I'll add some fossilized amber. And I'm just gonna blend them together to create this really gorgeous marriage where the two colors kind of come together on the tag. And let's finish up with some worn lipstick. Once you have your background, all the colors blended, you're going to take a stencil and you can use any stencil you like. I believe this one comes from Felicity Jane, I wanna say. You're gonna lay your stencil on top. You're gonna grab a wet baby wipe 
and you're gonna rub the wet baby wipe over top of the stencil, pushing down into those holes. And I'm just gonna go over the whole thing. Again, you wanna hold your stencil pretty firm. And depending on how thick your stencil is, you might need to rub pretty hard in those spots, just across the whole entire tag. There you have it. And once you lift up, you'll see that it removed the ink from the areas where the stencil was. Check it out. Let's try that same technique again with a different stencil. And now I can heat set it and let it go. For technique number 18, you're gonna need some plastic packaging or you could even use a sandwich wrap. I have some, just a sheet of plastic wrap here. And you're gonna do the smushing technique that a lot of people do, but it works really well with distress oxides. So let's grab some spiced marmalade. I don't think I've used that in a while. I'm gonna smush it onto my plastic packaging. I'm going to spritz with water. I'm gonna lay my tag into the plastic packaging and flip it over and then just use my finger and the packaging to move the ink around. And I just grabbed an extra tag because I knew there was gonna be extra ink, so I kinda like to not waste anything. You can even pick up some of that ink and move it over if you need to. And you're just using the plastic packaging to create your blend on the background. So what you're gonna do is heat set, spritz with water while you go, and then we'll go back and add another color. So check out that really beautiful, soft blend that I get on there. Um, just using some plastic packaging, which is just mind-boggling to me. So let's go in with another color. Seriously guys, look at how cool that looks. So just as a reminder, if you're not happy, always do more. So if you're not happy, it means you're not finished, especially with these, continue to layer to create these really cool depth and really awesome effects. Okay, for technique number 19, I like to call this the butterfly effect. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take some ink and you're gonna go direct to paper and I'm gonna use some wilted violet. And you wanna get a pretty good impression of the ink on there. I'm gonna use some broken china, and again, they don't need to necessarily overlap because once you add water and stuff, it'll all start to blend together. But if you do get any of the other ink on there, just wipe it off. So I've got some Wilton Violet, some broken china, and worn lipstick. There you go, you've got the three colors. You're going to add a bunch of water to this, actually a lot of water. You kind of want it to like look almost like it starts to blend and run together. You can start to see the pinks and the purples and the blues run together. You're gonna to take another clean tag and you're actually gonna place it right on top and push it down. And you might have some seepage come out, but that's okay. Then you're gonna lift it up and you'll see that you get two tags, and this is why I call it the butterfly effect, because the ink from here is gonna transfer onto there. Then you can dry it and spritz with water in between to get that oxidized look. So just a quick note about technique number 19. Typically when you do this direct to paper butterfly effect where you smush them together, one will be a lot softer than the other one. This is the one where I smush directly on the paper so there's obviously a lot more ink there so it's more saturated. But then this really soft one was created with the butterfly effect and I love how the colors mix together. And then when I add that water on top, I get that oxidized effect in a few places. For technique number 20, you're going to do some smushing on your mat again, but we're doing something a little different this time. I'm gonna take some peeled paint and smush it on there. And I'm gonna take some um, vintage photo, just for fun. 
and maybe some cracked pistachio. Just getting three different areas of color there. And this time, instead of spritzing and misting the colors, instead I'm going to spritz and mist my tag or my paper so it's really wet. So you can kind of see how my tag has all this water on it. And I'm going to place it down into the colors and lift it up. And it creates a whole other effect because that's not super watery, instead the tag is. So it picks up more saturated color. So I'm going to heat set that so you guys can check it out. So check out the saturation that occurs on the tag. It's a little more defined in some areas and then more watercolory and blendy in other areas. So I still have all the sink, so I'm going to spritz this um, one more time. And just so you know, some areas will reactivate there and I'm going to lay it down in the color again. Just pressing down and let's heat set it. And there you have it. For my next te technique, I need a wet baby wipe again and a clean tag. Kind of feel like I'm a magician. And for my next trick. Anyways, um, this one's really cool. It's kind of discovered by accident when I was playing around. So that's kind of really fun when you get to discover accidents. So for this one, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add some ink to my craft mat. And let's just start with Wilted Violets. I'm gonna use my wet baby wipe here. You could also use a sponge and I'm just gonna squish it up so it kind of creates some texture there. I'm gonna dab it into the Distress Oxide ink there and then dab it onto my tag, almost creating like a sponged effect. And if you need more color, just go back into the color there and smush it onto your um, tag. And as you know, I'm just kind of um, bouncing on the tag. I'm not spreading, I'm just bouncing. So once you're done and you get as much color on there as you want for that one, you can heat set it and now you can go in with your next colors. Check out this really cool sponge background and I think you could add as many layers as you want and you'd kind of get this really cool effect on the background. You can spritz with water if you want. I'm just gonna lightly spritz it and then um, dry it just so that it's kind of like more distressy. Um, but I really love that this kind of technique was an accident because I had some ink on my thing when I was trying to dab up some color and then I stumbled upon this. Okay, so I think I'm up to technique 22. For this technique, I kind of wanted to show you how you can use the Distress Oxides with your other Distress Inks. So if you're like me, you probably already have a bunch of Distress Inks and you don't want those to go to waste just because you've fallen in love with a new product. But you can actually mix the Distress Inks with the Distress Oxides. So um, let's just smush some of the Distress Ink onto my craft mat. I'm using evergreen bow and peeled paint. Then I'll also add some Distress Oxide with some faded jeans. So I've got one Distress Oxide and two Distress Inks. I'm gonna spritz all three of those with water and um, kind of drop my tag in there, lifting up some of the color. And you'll notice that where the Distress Ink is, it starts to blend um, a little bit differently than the Distress Oxide does. So let's heat set this. And part way through your heat set, just spritz um, with water and you'll notice that the areas where you have the Distress Oxide will oxidize. The areas where you have the Distress Inks will blend even more. So you can get really fun effects when you mix the Distress Inks with the Distress Oxides. Um, and I would just say kind of play with it and see what you can come up with and see how the um, Distress Oxides layer and the Distress Inks blend. So um, just one thing to keep in mind though, with the Distress Oxides, I found that you can mix as many colors as you want and layer and layer and layer and layer and it'll look really good. 
with the Distress inks, they tend to get muddy if you do too many layers or if you have too many colors. So typically when I do mixed media tags like this with Distress inks, I'll just use one, two, three colors maximum and typically in the same color families like cools or warm tones. Otherwise it can turn a little muddy. So just as a reminder, the difference between Distress Inks and Distress Oxides, the Distress Inks are dye-based, so they blend and react with water, and you'll notice that they're super translucent. So check out the greens here, they're super translucent, where the Distress Oxides are a fusion of dye and pigment, and they become more opaque, and when you add water, they actually oxidize. So you can see how on this one, the greeny tones are almost translucent, while that blue tone of the faded jeans is more opaque. Okay, now I wanna show you guys some techniques um, using the Distress Oxides for stamping. And actually, if you're stamping with Distress Oxides, you're gonna get a really great um, imprint, and that's just because of the like dye pigment fusion. It's just so gorgeous. So I wanted to use this giant world map um, stamp just because I think it's so cute. I'm gonna grab my acrylic block and place it on there. I'm gonna decide what color to go with and I think I'll go with peeled paint. And I'm gonna ink up my stamp with the ink pad. Just pressing down to make sure I get a good impression. And you can actually stamp right on your tag just like that, ink pad to stamp, stamp to tag or surface or whatever you're using. Lift up and you'll get a really great impression because of just the way that the pigment and dye fusion works. It just creates a really gorgeous effect. And you can just heat set it and leave it like that and you've got a really stunning image. Another thing you can do is you can ink up your stamp just like how I have, and you can actually mist your stamp with some water. Not too much water, but just enough to kind of get the ink moving, and then stamp that down. And just be careful because you're gonna have a lot of water there, so you don't wanna press too hard or add too much water, it might seep out. And then lift your stamp directly up and away so that um, you don't get a lot of ink blending all over the place. And you're not going to get as crisp of an image when you do it like that, but you can still see that the image shows up and you can heat set it. And I pretty much have a world map there, but it creates a whole different look. It almost looks more watercolory when I do it like that. So that's stamping directly on the paper, that's inking it up, misting it, and then stamping it. Another thing you can do is ink it up. just like how I did this one. Make sure there's enough ink on your stamp. Grab your paper or your tag or whatever you're using and stamp it just like so. Hopefully you get a good impression. And then you can mist it after you've stamped it. And I'm just misting it lightly. And you'll notice that it starts to oxidize because I've misted it. And some of the dye will run out and create almost like a halo effect. Now the more water you add, the more it's going to seep out and create that halo effect. So that's where I just lightly misted it. I wanna show you one where I missed it a lot. So let's ink up our stamp. And by the way, I'm using peeled paint. Grab my tag, stamp my image, okay? And now let's spray it a lot. And the more that you spray it, the more that that pigment and dye will separate and create this really fun, like halo-y effect around your image. So I'm gonna heat set that and then show you what it looks like. Now the fun thing about that is you can actually still see the world map image, but you've got this really cool like halo from where the dye has seeped out. So I showed you some really great stamping techniques where you take a stamp and you stamp it down on um, a light cardstock. 
but one of the really amazing things that I showed you earlier in the video is that distressed oxides show up on black or craft or darker cardstock. So I kind of wanted to show you what it would look like if I took fossilized ember and stamped it on top of black. Now, if I was using regular distress inks or really most inks, and I tried to stamp a yellow ink on top of a black cardstock or a dark background like this, it wouldn't show up. But the Distress Oxides are so incredible that check this out. I inked up my same world map using fossilized ember and then I hit it on my black cardstock tag, lift up, and check it out. I've got this really cool world map right on a black tag. Like you could never do that with any other ink. Like that to me alone is like mind boggling. And the same techniques that I was doing on the um, light colored tag, you can do those same techniques on the dark colored cardstock. Now obviously you'd get a different look depending on what you're doing. But I just wanted to quickly show you that. So that's where I've stamped it directly. Um, now I'm going to lightly mist the stamp after inking it and stamp that down on the dark cardstock and lift it up. And I get this really cool, fun effect on there. I'm going to heat set it and then show you what it looks like. Hey, okay, check that out. What a cool imprint on that dark cardstock. You know that really gorgeous blending I was show you, showing you earlier with the Distress Oxide inks and the Mini Ink blending tool? Well, you can do that on dark colored cardstock too. You're going to get a different look, but it still looks really, really cool. So I kind of wanted to show you what it looks like if you blend ink on a dark cardstock using a mini distress tool. Check it out. I don't know if I can, I hope the camera is picking this up, but it creates like an, a soft, I want to say like ethereal almost looking tone to your dark cardstock. Now imagine doing this on craft, on pattern paper, you've got this like really soft, light, ghosty effect almost. It's so stunning. Honestly, I can't even tell you how much I love the way that this looks. So that was worn lipstick. You can do the same thing with broken china and you can still blend them together just like how you would on a light cardstock, but you get a totally different effect when you do it on a dark cardstock. It kind of creates that like soft, misted, ghosty look. I don't know, I can't think of a better way to describe it, but it's just so cool and I'm excited that um, I can share it with you. I saw Jennifer McGuire do some cards where she did this and it was so pretty. So I would definitely go check out her channel. There you have it, the, the Distress Oxides on Dark Cardstock. You can leave it as is and heat set it or you can even add water. So you can spritz it, you can flick it. This time I'm gonna just drop some water droplets on it just to show you what it looks like when you oxidize the ink on a dark cardstock. Okay, check out the blending. On the dark background, again, that really soft, ghosted effect. Um, you can oxidize it when you add water droplets. And the more that you um, go in with your blending tool, the more color that you'll be able to layer on top. So I've already heat set that and added water, but I can actually go back in and add more of that pink tone on there if I want it and just really play around with that like ghosted effect on the dark cardstock. It's just so like, ugh, I just can't even explain it, it's so cool. So I wanna really encourage you to maybe branch outside your comfort zone and try um, doing some mixed media with dark cardstock and your Distress Oxide inks. Okay, another really cool technique is the fact that you can heat emboss with Distress Oxide inks. So they last longer wet because of the pigment fusion that's in there. Typically dye inks dry faster and pigment dry slower. Um, but you can actually um, use 
heat embossing. So I'm just going to layer up some of these Studio Calico pine trees. I think they would be kind of cute on the bottom of my um, tag here. So I'm going to use some peeled paint, Distress Oxide inks, and I'm going to ink up these, what do you call them, pine trees. Then I'm going to stamp my image, pressing down firmly. I'm going to lift up and I've got this really beautiful stamped image on there. But what I can do is I can actually heat emboss. So I'm going to use clear um, embossing powder for this just to show you how you can use clear embossing powder to get like a raised, um, almost like acrylic finish to your stamped images with distress oxides. So I stamped it with distress oxide, I covered it with clear heat embossing powder, and now I'm gonna heat it up. And I'll let you guys see it as it changes. And there you go, you've got that like gorgeous heat embossed um, stamped trees on there. And the fun thing about that is that if you decide to go back to that tag and add more distress inks to it, whether it's the regular distress inks or the oxide inks, it's not going to ruin your stamped image because you've heat embossed on top of it. So for example, if I decide to take some faded jeans and go direct to paper, you'll see that the um, stamped image almost resists where I've added that faded jeans. I can mist that faded jeans a lot so it starts to blend and run all over my tag. I can um, then let it dry and you'll notice that my trees are resisting that ink. Check it out. The trees resist that ink that I put down so you get that nice crisp stamped image that I have there, but then you have this really pretty distress um, background too, which doesn't impact it. And you can continue to layer and layer and layer on this background and your trees are never gonna get ruined. So let's say I wanted to add some broken china. I can add it without ruining my stamped image. Check out this incredible background where the Distress ink has resisted. So you still get that really cool tree image that I stamped on there, but you also get this really fun background that I have created. It's kind of like really, really fun. So for the next technique, you'll want to start with a blended background. So I'm just going to use some of my favorite colors here to just create like a really simple blended background. So I'm using Cracked Pistachio. And why don't we use some Fossilized Amber just because the yellow and the green look so delightful together. And then they kind of make like a blue tone a little bit. And you can go back in with your original color to get an even better blend. And then I think we'll just do a little tiny bit of broken china just up here just for fun. So it kind of blends from yellow into the green um, picked pistachio into this really beautiful blue. Okay. 
so what you're going to want to do is you want to heat set this so that it's completely set. That's pretty dry. Next I'm going to grab a stencil and another color of Distress Oxide. So this is one of those um, techniques that's probably a little more advanced. I'm going to use this really beautiful heart stencil. It's a little sticky. I don't know what I was doing last time. I'll just wipe it off. And I'm going to use some Distress Oxide in Worn Lipstick. And I'm going to push it through the stencil. And I'm not going over the whole entire image, just mostly diagonally across, just like so. And because this is still wet, I can heat emboss it. So I'm going to use clear heat emboss and powder, and it should just stick to the pink. Because that's the layer that is still wet, the other one has been heat set might need to just tap it off a little bit. And then you can heat emboss the pink. So for this more advanced technique, what you're going to do is um, create a whole bunch of different layers. So I'm just gonna show you guys how I do that. So I'm gonna start by getting a background and I'm going to blend some colors on my background. So let's start with cracked pistachio and get a really nice blended color on the background. So for this tag, we're kind of mixing a bunch of the techniques together, like the blending, the heat embossing, the misting, all of those fun things. We're gonna mix them all together for this more advanced tag. So I'm going to blend a couple of different colors here I think it might be fun to blend cracked pistachio with fossilized amber. It just looks so pretty. And we can even throw in a little broken china just for fun. Because, I mean, y'all know I love some broken china. So I'm just going to do that around the edges. Get a little more color in there, especially in this bottom corner. Okay, so and you can go back in with more colors if you want to just get a better blend. Okay, there you go. There's my initial setup. I've got broken china, cracked pistachio, and fossilized amber. I've used my mini distress tools to blend that color. It's still pretty wet um, in terms of the ink can still move around, so I'm going to heat set this. Partway through heat setting, I'm going to mist um, it lightly so that I can get some oxidization on that main level or background layer. Once your background is completely dry, grab a stencil that you love, and I'm gonna stencil this um, flower image using the peeled paint and my mini blending tool. And I'm actually not gonna do the stencil all over the tag, just mostly in this middle area where I had that yellow. Once I have that done, I've got this really pretty stenciled image and it's still wet so I'm actually going to heat emboss it using some clear heat embossing powder and it should just stick to the stencil area because the background was already dried. That's why it's important to make sure your background is really dry for this technique. Just tap off any extra um, embossing powder and now heat the embossing powder to set it. 
So, so far I have two layers. I have that background layer that I blended, and I have this heat embossed layer um, with those gorgeous stenciled flowers. And I think you could leave it there, but I'm a big believer that in mixed media, layers are king. So, um, try to do another technique on top of that. So I have this ink left on there. Maybe we can make a negative image in the top and bottom layers um, by using that leftover ink. So remember that technique, lift it up. And I'm just doing it on the top and bottom because the middle already has that embossed color on it. And we're just creating another layer and I'm gonna heat set that. And it's super subtle, but you can kind of see that negative um, design at the top and the bottom. So I've got the heat embossing in the middle, got that negative design at the top and the bottom. And I don't think we're done yet. I think we need to do some smushing um, because we've used smushing all throughout this entire video of techniques, but I haven't included it on this um, super layered tag. So I've got some faded jeans there and maybe we should add some fossilized amber too, just so we can get some more of that yellow tone. So I smush it onto my background, mist it with water, and then I'm going to dip my tag into that. Heat set it and halfway through, mist it with some water. Now we want to use some more of this color just because we shouldn't waste anything. So I'm just going to dip some more of that in there. And heat set it. So I've got my next layer on there. And now I want to just quickly use a baby wipe just to rub off some of the ink that's gotten on my embossed areas. Just because that will resist. And... Um, I love the way that it's looking so far, but I think we could still add some more layers just for fun. So, and because there's still things that you can do, right? So, um, the next technique that we can do is um, to add some splatters. So I need a paintbrush for this. And I think it would be fun to add some splatters in worn lipstick. And let's say Wilted Violet. So I'm going to add a lot of water to that to get it so that I can splatter it. And remember you want to do one color at a time, heat set it, and then do the next color. So let's start with the worn lipstick. And I'm just going to add some splatters to my tag here. And remember the closer you are, the bigger your droplets. And the farther away you are, the smaller your droplets. And once you're happy with your droplets, heat set it. And the last thing I'm going to do on to this tag, or these two tags where I've done these multi layers, just to finish it off, is I'm going to use some iced spruce just to ink around the edges, just to create like a defined edge. And on this one, I'm going to go with a brighter color. Just for fun, maybe I'll go with Fired Brick. And there you have it, some multi-layered um, tags using multiples of techniques that I showed you in today's video. You know, one of the things I've discovered from playing with the Distress Oxide inks is that the techniques that you can do are kind of endless. There's so many fun ideas and you can mix the techniques, you can play, and I think the best way to get the best results is to just play with the inks and see what they can do. Um, I made so many different tags and I wanna just kinda show them to you while I finish saying some of my thoughts about Distress Oxide inks. Um, I made so many tags and I love the way that all the tags worked out because I feel like they all um, helped me learn some really fun techniques. And I am going to turn these into something. I, I didn't just waste all these tags. Um, 
So my little sister is getting married and we're gonna be using these tags for the wedding favors. Um, so I'm gonna turn them into something. Probably not the unicorn, but all the other ones I will. But I just feel like I learned so many fun techniques um, just from playing with the Distress Oxide inks. And I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was a little long, um, but I really wanted to jam pack all the different techniques that I learned as I was playing and as I was experimenting. I basically made like three pages of notes in my bullet journal of all the different techniques. Um, I'll just show you all the different notes and techniques and things that I learned as I was playing. So I kind of thought it would be fun to share them with you guys because I know that you guys would enjoy that. So just as I'm showing these to you, just um, want to make a couple of notes just in case I forgot to say anything. All of these techniques you can definitely do on mixed media tags um, or shipping tags like I did, but you could definitely use them on just regular scrapbook layouts, cards, um, multimedia journals, really the possibilities are endless. I like to play on tags just because I like the smaller size and I like that uh, I can kind of experiment without feeling like I'm wasting money or anything but honestly I love the way all of these tags worked out that I feel like I'm gonna definitely use all of them and find a way to use them. Some of them I might add a little bit more to to finalize them but I really do love the way that they worked out. Um, one thing I'm not sure if I really mentioned a lot, but with the Distress Oxide inks, you get a really chalky finish or chalk-like finish. Um, it doesn't rub off though. I mean, my fingers are really dirty, but it doesn't rub off. Um, and it's very vibrant, creamy, and almost like a matte suede type finish. Um, I love the way that they stamp and even though I showed you a couple stamping techniques there's so many more stamping techniques too so my recommendation would be go check out Jennifer McGuire or some of the other incredible stampers and card makers on YouTube because they have great tips and tutorials for how to do stamping with the Distress Oxides I mostly showed you more mixed media type um, ideas a couple tips remember wet on wet blends like this and wet on dry layers like that and one of the things I really love about them is they blend so smoothly um, that if you are using your mini um, blending tools you'll get a really soft smooth line with no harsh lines and another thing that hopefully you've seen me say throughout uh, the videos too is you can add water you don't have to add water water helps it oxidize but if you don't add water it's still going to create a really stunning look on your tag or on your project um, it's just going to have a different effect so again my recommendation would be just play and experiment see what techniques you enjoy the most which ones um, you want to try again, which ones you want to combine. Maybe some of them you won't like and you don't want to do again. Others you might really like and want to do over and over again. So I think just playing. Um, if you are interested, interested, Tim Holt said that you can seal the Distress Oxides with micro glaze and it won't affect its look or um, oxidization so definitely you could use microglaze I don't have any so that's why I didn't really show that to you but I did want to mention it just in case you are interested and like I showed you in one of the techniques you can miss you mix your distress oxides with your other distress tools like the other distress inks I don't have any distress crayons or any of the other marker tool thingies um, but I think it would be really fun to see if you could mix the Distress Oxides with the crayons or any of the other Tim Holtz um, products because I feel like you'd get some really cool effects. So I want to encourage you to play and experiment to see what you can come up with. And again, when you're doing it on mixed media tags, if you hate the way it looks, just chuck it. It's okay. This costs like 10 cents. But really my thought process and what I say over and over in classes that I teach is that if it you don't like it, don't feel bad. Mixed media is all about experimentation and sometimes it might just mean you're not done yet and you need to add a couple more layers to get to a place where you will love it. 
Um, or sometimes you can embellish it or add a title or something and it'll get to a place where you like it. But there's so many really gorgeous tags here and I can't wait to turn them into favors for the wedding. She's having a really bright colorful wedding so I think all these bright colors are actually going to look really well. Especially the blues and greens because that's kind of more her color tones. But I love the way that they worked out. And I'll probably bring you guys along for a video of me making the favors so that you can check them out too and see how I turned all of these mixed media tags that I played with into an actual project. Thank you so much for joining me for this really long technique video. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed seeing all the different tags and ways that you can use distress oxides. Honestly, I am blown away by their incredible properties and all the different things that you can do and how you can play and experiment and the different things that you can do. I'm actually really looking forward to playing with them more to see what else I can create using the Distress Oxide inks and my stamps and just everything. I'm really excited about playing with them. And I think that the Distress Oxides might be my favorite Ranger and Tim Holtz product so far. Um, they're just so much fun and I can't wait to get the next 12 colors so that I can play and experiment even more. And I have a feeling I'm a little obsessed, which you might have been able to tell from all of the mixed media tags and techniques that I had for you because I've been playing with these since I've got them and I can't put them down. I might be addicted. so. Um, I think that you're going to love them too. If you have any questions about any of the things that I said in this video, any of the techniques or anything, please leave a comment below. I would be happy to answer and to help out. I'm going to have a list of all the different techniques um, with instructions for how to do that technique over on my blog when this video goes up. So if you visit ToriBissell.com and check out the blog, um, you will see a link um, or you'll see a list to all of the different techniques that I showed in this video with instructions on how to do them. And I'm also going to leave a link for some of my favorite um, Distress Oxide videos that I've seen online where people have done um, different things and made cards and projects with them. And I want to share those with you because they really inspired me and I think they'll really inspire you to look at all these tags. Can somebody write to Tim Holtz and tell him that he created a new addiction? <laughs> Anyways, that's it for me. Thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing. And if you're interested in checking out the rest of my mixed media tag videos, um, I do have a playlist over on my YouTube channel where you can check out all the different mixed media tags that I've made over time because I love making mixed media tags. And not just with Distress Oxides, but really any mixed media tools. So I think you'll enjoy those videos. And if you check out the playlist on my channel, channel you'll be able to find those and other than that I love you guys I appreciate you thanks for joining me and I can't wait to play and make some wedding favors bye